Hey, welcome back to the channel. So you finally decided to learn more about AWS. But as you signed up, it was quite overwhelming as there are a lot of services to learn. So in this video, we'll look at a roadmap that might help us invest our time better. But before we get started, let's go back in time. So I got this image from Google and this is how the AWS dashboard looked in 2009. Back then, it was much simpler. As you can see, there are only a handful of services that we needed to learn. And let's now come back to present time. Since then, AWS has expanded their services in pretty much each category. And now they offer over 200 services, which is in a way very impressive, but also makes it very hard for us to get started. So the goal for today is to focus on fundamentals and to identify and learn the most commonly used services first. After that, we can learn specialized services on a need to know basis. Now let's go to our roadmap. I've divided the roadmap into five categories. First is fundamentals, second is front end, then back end, DevOps, and data engineering. So let's start by going over to fundamentals. Starting off with fundamentals, we have regions and availability zones. While this is not a service in AWS, this is a very important fundamental. Here you can learn more about the concept of region, which is a physical location in the world where we store the data center. And each group of those logical data centers can be called an availability zone. Next is identity and access management, or better known as IAM. This helps us to securely manage access to our services and resources. This integrates with pretty much every service on the platform. So this is a really important fundamental to learn. Next is VPC, or the virtual private cloud. This basically provides us with isolated cloud resources. And in a way, it kind of operates as a networking infrastructure for the whole platform. With VPC, you can learn important concepts such as private and public subnet, internet and NAT gateways, access control list, and security groups. So there are more concepts in VPC, and I definitely missed some here, but I think these are kind of the important ones. Okay, now with our fundamentals down, let's move on to front end. I'll close this and scroll down to front end. So to start with, you might see a green outline around some services. This means these are some beginner friendly services you can start with. So CloudFront is a CDN offering from AWS, which is a global content delivery network. This is really helpful when you want to optimize your content such as videos, images around edge locations. Next, we have S3, which is simple storage service. This is a scalable object storage. S3 has an amazing durability and offers many different tiers such as infrequent access, Glacier, and many more. Next, we have Amplify. So Amplify is kind of an interesting service. It lets front-end and mobile developers quickly and easily build full-stack application. So a couple years back when I started learning AWS, I was coming from Google Cloud background. So if you're in the same boat, think of Amplify as a Firebase alternative. Next is Cognito. So Cognito provides identity management for applications. So it helps us easily build functionality like user sign up, user sign in, forget password, and much more. And finally, we have Elastic Beanstalk. So Elastic Beanstalk helps us easily run web applications. It orchestrates various AWS services like EC2, S3, SNS, CloudWatch, Elastic Load Balancers, and much more. This is really helpful when you want to move with a lot of velocity and not worry about the underlying infrastructure. So we've covered some services which are great, but not limited to front end. And now let's move on to backend. So the idea here is to not learn everything, but to identify options and then learn what fits our use case. So starting with compute, we have the classic Elastic Compute Cloud or better known as EC2. So EC2 are basically virtual servers in the cloud. And frankly, they are very versatile and can have lots of use cases. And just like before, given the green highlight, it's one of the original service and a very important one. So I definitely recommend prioritizing it. And EC2 will also introduce us to auto-scaling in form of auto-scaling groups. Next, we have AWS Lambda. So Lambda might be the most popular service from AWS. It basically helps us to run code such as functions without thinking about any servers. And here, my advice would be to definitely prioritize learning this. Next, we have LightSail. So LightSails are virtual private servers. And here you might ask, wait, was it EC2 for this? In a way, they are very similar in what they do, but presented differently. So LightSail kind of bundles your storage, DNS management, static IP, and offers you as a single package. And if you want these things on the EC2 side, you will have to configure them. And with that, we wrapped our compute and let's move on to databases. 
So AWS has lots of database offerings and I've just listed few of them here. To start off, we have RDS or our relational database service. It's a managed relational database service for MySQL, Postgres, Oracle, SQL Server, and MariaDB. It's a great service to learn and it should fit most of your SQL needs perfectly. Next is Aurora, which is a managed relational database, but it is serverless. So serverless is kind of out of sight, out of mind thing where AWS abstracts the service even more and you can work with what you need without worrying about things like scalability. Next is DynamoDB. So DynamoDB is a managed NoSQL database and it is also serverless. Next, we have Elastic Cache. It's an in-memory caching service. Think Redis and Memcached. Let's move on to networking and delivery. Here, we start with API Gateway. This service helps us to build, deploy, and manage our APIs easily. Again, this is one of those versatile and very important services which might come in handy. Next is Route 53. It is a scalable DNS service. Like I mentioned earlier, this is more towards the delivery side of things. Next, we have Elastic Load Balancing. This helps us to distribute incoming traffic across multiple targets. It also comes in many types such as Application Load Balancer, Gateway Load Balancer, and Network Load Balancer. Next, we have Certificate Manager, also known as ACM. It lets us provision, manage, and deploy our SSL or TLS certificates. It also integrates very nicely with services such as CloudFront, API Gateway, Elastic Load Balancing, and many more. With network and delivery out of the way, let's move on to integration. For an overview, these services helps us integrate our application in a very nice decoupled manner. To start off, we have Simple Queue Service, better known as SQS. It provides us with managed message queues, and as you can guess, it's serverless. To think of it, all the services in integration section are serverless. Next, let's talk about Simple Notification Service, also known as SNS. This serverless offering helps us with all our pub sub needs for our distributed applications. Next, we have EventBridge. EventBridge is a relatively new service when compared to SQS or SNS. It is very similar to SNS, but with tons of features such as schema discovery, message archiving, replaying events, and much more. It works really well as a serverless event bus for event-driven use cases. And finally, we have Step Functions. It is a workflow service for distributed applications, and it can help us automate our business processes. Next, let's move on to containers. To start with, we have Elastic Container Service or ECS. So Elastic Container Service is a highly secure, reliable and scalable way to run containers. It is kind of a vendor specific service and it might not be as feature rich as Kubernetes, but it's pretty good. Talking about Kubernetes, let's look into Elastic Kubernetes Service or EKS. It is pretty much the best way to run Kubernetes cluster in AWS. Now I will not go into detail about Kubernetes as it is out of scope for this video. Next we have App Runner. It helps us build and run containerized web apps, APIs at scale. It is a relatively new service and it's fully managed by AWS. It has lots of features such as out of the box load balancing, simple auto scaling, and it also has SSL enabled by default. So this pretty much covers all our container services. Now let's move on to monitoring. So you might be surprised to see just CloudWatch here, but trust me, it's a very powerful service. It allows us to collect and access all the data we have such as logs on a single platform across all the AWS resources and applications. It is very impressive to see how AWS architected CloudWatch and centralized everything. I will definitely encourage you to learn more about things like metrics, alarms, and log groups. With monitoring out of the way, we have covered our backend section. Now let's move on to DevOps. Let's start with Cloud Development Kit. So CDK is not necessarily a service, but a phenomenal developer tool. It helps us define our infrastructure as code to model our services. Normally, I will also recommend Terraform, but since this is an AWS specific video, you cannot go wrong with CDK. Next, we have the classic DevOps service Code Build. So Code Build helps us build and test our code. Think of it as continuous integration sort of things. Next is Code Deploy. It helps us to automate code deployments for services such as EC2, Lambda, and it also integrates as deployment controller for ECS. The last one is Code Pipeline, which is a fully managed continuous delivery service. You can easily build a great delivery workflow with this as it integrates nicely with other AWS services. Think of it as Jenkins or Circle CI. With that, we have covered our DevOps part. And now let's move on to data engineering. Here we have Athena which allows us to query data in S3 using SQL. Next is Kinesis. This service helps us to analyze real-time video and data streams. Next, let's move on to Redshift. So Redshift is a fast, simple, cost-effective data warehousing. 
It is heavily used in business intelligence as it allows us to run complex analytics queries against petabytes of data. Next is Glue. It is a serverless data integration service that makes it easy to discover and prepare data for analytics, machine learning, and application development. And finally, we have Lake Formation. So it is a service that basically makes it easy to set up a data lake. And with that, we have covered our data engineering part as well. Now let's look at the full roadmap. So this is how our full roadmap looks like. So this is it for this video. I hope this video was helpful. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.